This is exactly right. Gwen. <laughs> Hello and welcome to My Favorite Murder, The Minnesota, where we read your shit to you. Do you like it? We like it. <laughs> so last week we did all of our uh, people that were um, hiding secret lives, mm-hmm. and which was super fun and we got so many that we will definitely continue to do them. But at one point we veered off into a basically an interesting anonymous donors, people that were doing positive things with their oh, secret lives. Yes, I remember. Not everyone's starting a multiple family. <laughs> there were some good parts. And um, my beautiful friend Jason Lopez, who... Steven, you know him too. Mm-hmm. Um, who listens to every single episode and always the day after anything of ours comes out, Aww. he'll let me know what his observations are on, on the episode. Aww. And so after that last mini sode, he wrote to me, Ethos, the music program for kids here in Portland is a nonprofit that provides, um, group lessons, music camps, etc. And after Prince died, they found out that he was one of their anonymous donors. Aww. Isn't that amazing yeah and and then he said um isn't that random just a little music school here in Port- portland and i said that's because that means he was doing it everywhere Aww. i bet you everywhere prince went yeah because prince was like a kid in minnesota yeah like he was he knows what it's like to be a super talent that's out in the middle of nowhere just kind of waiting for your chance yeah so you know that he just sprinkled his shit around anonymously i love that that's beautiful Prince. Thanks, Prince. <laughs> Let's all take a moment to thank Prince. Okay, do you want me to go first? Oh, sure. The headline of this is the subject line. My mom's ex-fiance tried to blow up her house, and that is how she met my dad. South African hometown. <laughs> cool. This, the, the brand new. We've yeah. never had one from South Africa. I don't think we have. Um, dearest Karen, Georgia, Stephen, and animal compadres. <laughs> don't mind it. Mm-mm. When my mom was in her 20s, she started dating a guy, and they eventually got engaged to move in together. My grandparents were always a bit skeptical of the dude and thought he was a creep, but they went along with it out of respect for my mom. As an avid gym bunny in the 80s, my mom wore spandex bodysuits and tights to her workouts accompanied with a hairsprayed brush of curly hair and oh, neon socks amazing <laughs> when, we could stop there and i'd be great yeah when she arrived home one day after a gym session her then fiance started beating her up <gasps> for quote dressing like a slut to the gym and accused her of se- seeking other men's attention uh in parentheses it says toxic masculinity ruins the party mm-hmm. Again, Mm -hmm. my mom stayed sexy and noped out of there, broke off their engagement and drove her little Volkswagen Beetle back to my grandparents' house where she endured many I told you so's from my gran. That night, after everyone had gone to bed, my mom awoke to a massive crash and smelled smoke. She saw an orange flicker through her window and saw smoke coming out of the area where the car was parked under my granddad's little (gasps) car park outside. My grandparents, my mom and my aunt rushed outside and found my mom's ex-fiance speeding off down the street. (gasps) He had thrown a homemade bomb into the car park and blown up half of my grandparents' house. Holy shit. Luckily, everyone was safe, including my mom's cocker spaniel, Jason. Jason. (laughs) Jason the cocker spaniel. (laughs) Sorry. The police let Jason. Also, my I just talked about my friend Jason. Oh, yeah, that's weird. Um, The police were alerted and they arrested the ex. They requested that my mom get a report from a medical professional with regards to her uh, physical injuries so that they could include that in her indictment against the ex. Mm-hmm. As fate would have it, my dad was the doctor on call that day. Girl. And that's how he met my mom. The rest is history. They've been happily married for 27 years, have two kids, 10 dogs, and three cats Aww. together. Oh, I love it. I really hope you enjoy the story as much as I always do. Keep up, keep up the amazing podcast. It's so great to find a community of true crime lovers and your podcast feels like home. Hope to catch you live someday. S. DGM Kelly Kelly that's the best that was great for some reason I read that headline I read pre-read the email Mm -hmm. and I didn't really 
it's like I didn't notice the part with the doctor until I just read it this time. Yeah, I love I it. I love it. Ugh, I just want to know, like, their, their first meeting was like, you know. Well, you know she wore that same workout outfit. I was wondering if she was in her fucking spandex outfit. Like, <laughs> she she's going to stop by the doctor's real quick, and then she's going to go to the gym. <laughs> she's going to pull on those leg, leg yes. warmers. Yes. Neon green. All right. This one's called, My Grandmother Was Kidnapped. And then in parentheses, it says, she's okay. (laughs) Um, Hi, wonderful women, Pets and Steven. My grandmother used to work as a nurse's aide in an insane asylum in Connecticut in the 60s. Mm. Fairfield Hills was a psychiatric hospital in Newton, Connecticut. Newtown, Connecticut, that opened in the 30s and closed in the 90s. The massive campus still stands vacant. And of course, there are stories of hauntings because, I mean, it's an empty former insane asylum, for Christ's sake. (laughs) When my Nana worked there, each employee would go to a central building to clock in every morning and then report to the building they worked in. This is a sprawling campus with dozens of buildings, and it was the middle of winter. So my grandmother ran into the main building, leaving her car unlocked checked in and ran back to her car to drive to her assigned building. After she turned on the car, she was suddenly shocked when a man popped up from be- from the back seat, wrapped her neck with a piece of rope and said, drive. No. She did as she was instructed. He gave random orders to turn left, right, seemingly not having a destination in mind, but he ended up having her drive about 20 minutes to North Waterbury, Connecticut, where he jumped out of the car and bolted. Thankfully, because she had checked into work but didn't show up minutes later to her assigned building, the staff immediately knew something was wrong. Apparently, this man was one of the patients who had escaped his room and was looking to get as far away from Fairfield Hills as possible. My Nana was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Listen to this fucking thing right here. Ready? Okay. They never did find the guy. Oh. As far as I know, but the rope he used to hold my grandmother was raw. It was a raw, ragged thing, and it wore down the skin around her neck to the point where later on an EMT told her that if it had worn ev- even a tiny bit further, it would for sure have cut her corroded artery. Wow. Carotid? Carotid, yeah. Corroded artery. <laughs> it's a well, it would have corroded or carotid. Exactly. My Nana is one of the most badass women I know whose favorite phrase is, I don't get mad, I get even. <laughs> she turned 92 Jesus. years old this year and, I w- yeah. <laughs> and would still manage to stay sexy and not get murdered in any situation she was in. <laughs> Finally, even though the story is about someone breaking out of an insane asylum, I don't want to diminish uh, mental health issues in any way. So I just want to thank you both for normalizing and being so upfront with your mental health. Fairfield Hills, Hills was a place where people like you or me would be locked and f- up and forgotten. That's right. And I'm glad that it's closed and we're slowly moving toward a point where people can seek help without the threat of stigma. And that's definitely thanks to women like you. Oh. oh. SSDGM Lauren. God, that's so scary. Fucking terrifying. Nana. Did that, can you, did that happen at night? It doesn't sound, well, she got, I mean, she I got to work. In my mind, it was the daytime. It, yeah, I You know imagine. what I mean? But, but I was just immediately, because you know there's that, it made me think of that, um, there's the urban myth that was going around for a little while, warning people at the mall, like, to check, because there was that story of the yeah. girl that gets into the car, and there's a guy in the back seat or yeah. whatever. But that, that idea, like, my car, I can see, in yeah yeah. and even when i get into my car i'll still look back and just make sure i do once in a while when it's really dark do a little checky check yeah just in case yeah Mm -hmm. okay now you go how about the subject line whose toenails are these (laughs) (laughs) love it hi karen uh hi karen georgia karen associates yeah that's right i got two shit (laughs) I really, I really liked that more than I should have. I'm almost 50. I need to set the scene before I try to explain the thing I found in my basement wall. I live in a big Victorian house that has been transformed into a co-op housing unit for university and college students. We have eight housemates, plus we usually have a couple of couch surfers crashing in our living room. So much fun. Mm. Oh, get I was going to say, morning. what a mess. <laughs> Fuck that shit. Yeah, but you get up in the morning and you make some coffee and you may or may not smoke a joint. And then you just start playing cards. And there's like four people. You just ha- you could immediately Someone's just start all- playing just games. You want someone who always wants to hang out. Yes. All the time. You should join a commune. I really should. Or I, you know what I should do is be a super creep and like open my house <gasps> up to borders. Do it. And just Don't like do it. pick. Don't pick do it. people. Do it. And then be like, you're here. You have to play Uno with me. <laughs> Okay, it's not about me. 
And since the co-op has been operating since the 50s, a lot of people have drifted in and out of our house. The basement is an amalgamation of all the strange shit that's been brought into our house Ugh. by generations of weird hippies. It's also an expansive basement with a lot of unfinished walls twisting into dark little rooms and hallways going nowhere in particular. Ugh. It gives me the creeps and I hate going down there. Recently, when I was looking for one of, uh, when I was looking in one of those weird little storage rooms for a bike pump, I saw something highly fucked up. It was a glass jam jar sealed with a cork and set down on a beam in an open wall and it was filled to the top with human no. toenail clippings. No, 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 no. <laughs> you see it in your mind's eye? No. Oh, look at all the yellow <laughs> crescents. Stop it. The hard yellow crescents. Stop it. I've asked many current and past housemates if they know anything about the <laughs> toenail jar. One past housemate has seen it before and actually told me about the jar last year, and I hadn't believed them. In any case, no one has any idea who put it in our basement, how long it's been there, why it was put there, or whose toenails are in that jar. I wish I could say I threw it out, but I was afraid to touch it, and so is everyone else yeah. who has ever looked at it. SSDGM Emily. That's awful. <laughs> it's so disgusting. So weird that I really want to go through that basement. Oh, with like a big old fluorescent, yeah. like a fluorescent beam. I just want to go through all the boxes. I lived in a house like that for a little while, like in Echo Park, where like, I think that someone told me that the Brian Jonestown Massacre, the band used mm -hmm. to like, that was their house. Oh. And I'd actually been to parties there when I was younger. And they, so the, the basement was filled with like, fucking people's shit who had to like jam and get the fuck out of there or whatever it was right like, just i didn't take anything it was just like fun to look through people's shit i love it i'm a monster i okay. love communal living not the life for me with america's number one meal kit hello fresh you'll get easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door all you have to do is cook and enjoy hello fresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality from step-by-step -step recipes to pre-measured ingredients, you'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in about 30 minutes. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout. HelloFresh has you covered. There's something for everyone, from family recipes to calorie smart and vegetarian, and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and, and Kraft Burgers. HelloFresh has more five-star recipes than any other meal kit, so you'll know you're getting something incredible. HelloFresh is flexible, and it fits your lifestyle, easily change your delivery days, food preferences and skip a week whenever you need. Break out of your dinnerette and make deliciousness part of every week with HelloFresh. I love that even though HelloFresh is super easy and they make it really basic and like straightforward, you still feel like you're cooking this like incredible home cooked dinner and that makes me feel good about myself. And that instead of just ordering takeout, I'm actually making something and preparing something at home and that just, it feels good. So for $80 off your first month of HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com slash Murder80 and enter Murder80. It's like receiving eight meals for free only at HelloFresh.com slash Murder80, promo code Murder80. Go bye. I'm not going to tell you the name of this one, but I will tell you that the theme of my stories today is grandparents. Okay. Because here's another one. Hello, all the wonderful people and animals of MFM. Hey, that's, that's one of the best ones yet. Easy. Love it. I have quite the slew of stories I've been meaning to write into you. Murderous great uncle, survivor friend's mom, high school murders. However, once you mentioned writing in stories about secretives, about secretives, my cousin... <laughs> <laughs> I can't be right. No, I get it. She wrote Secret Lives, but it was in one word. Oh, I there, she forgot to do this. Secret Lives. About secretives, which is the professional name for That's right. My cousin, who introduced me to your podcast, insisted I finally buckle down and write this thing. So here it is. Around April, I was cleaning out my grandparents' house where they had lived for 62 years now. They didn't pass. They didn't pass, just had a lot of shit that needed to go and came across some interesting things in the process. My grandmother, who who we call Batchy, has always... <laughs> it sounds like Batchy. It does. B-A-T-C-H-I-E. Batchy. Batchy. Okay. Has always been known for the insane amount of photos she takes so naturally a lot of what i found was pictures lots of family from growing up some of my mom and her sister when they were kids etc as i was working on the living room uh cleaning all the wine glasses on display with batchy she was <laughs> telling me about the good old days and how all her quote intimate friends would come over and they would have a great time but 
quote, of course not when the children were around. I was taken back by that statement, but I chalked <laughs> it up to an 84 year old woman with dementia talking about throwing crazy parties with her friends, getting drunk, playing cards, listening to Elvis records. I mean, all of those things. And so is Elvis. Uh, in the next few days, I found some interesting birthday cards from my nanny and grandpa Meatball. <laughs> what the fuck? My cousin's grandparents. Is this is this a cartoon character writing into us? I just love that. Like, <laughs> funny names are the best. Uh, in the hall closet, which I again was like, hmm, they have very un- they have a very uncomfortable sense of humor, but chalked it up to nothing other than that. And then the next paragraph says, okay, so I was wrong. (laughs) (laughs) It certainly wasn't nothing. I moved on to clean their bedroom. At this point, my batchy and papa were staying at my mom's house so I could be slightly more productive and found a box of pictures under the bed. Not being at all surprised by this because they were quite literally boxes of pictures everywhere. I opened the box to look at the photos and possibly have a few laughs about my mom's old boyfriends or whatever. All caps. Nope. Mm. Not pictures of my mom's old boyfriends or photos of us growing up. Instead, I found photos of my grand, uh, from my grandparents, all caps, swinger parties. No, 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 no. <laughs> Steven is pointing at the, you have photos? What? Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> Swear. Oh, no. oh my God. Oh no, what I'm looking at right now. She sent no. them to us. Oh she no. Sk- she took them and sent them to us. I love her, love her, love her. Look are they old shit. people or are they new young were they young? They're they're middle aged people, but it's in the sixties or seventies. I mean seventies or eighties. <gasps> um but look, they're all in one bed like like Charlie Bucket's grandparents. It's a oh. bunch of adults in a bed under a sheet together, smiling like oh, little my devils. Oh god, they are having so so much fun. Crow. Oh, she's touching his penis in that photo, but you can't tell. And laughing her ass off, too. Oh, my God. They are, they're like all gre- like in one bed together. Oh, my God. Let me see more. Let me see more. <laughs> Holy shit. They're all- There's a lot of them. You guys. Oh, my God. They're like all naked and How many of these can we post? I don't. I None, feel like probably. we can't post these. I don't. Because we don't know. Stephen's shaking his head Unless Stephen goes through and puts <gasps> tiny black bars across everybody's eyes. Look at this one the thing is like they're in these suggestive positions but they're cracking up they're they're just being kind of funny dirty drunk yeah kind of what it seems like but also in a room that it that's paneled in um wood panel wall wallpaper and then wood paneling on the bottom half it's a seven this looks like 1980 to me it's so brown and they look like they look like 1980s, 40s. You know what I mean? Like, they're in their 40s. Yeah, they look old to us. Okay. It also looks like people who probably drank a ton and were bored. Yeah. And they were like, well, you look, you all have a mustache or a beard. Right. We might as well just fuck like, each other. Like, you two fucked each other in high school. Like, you've already seen his dick. Let's yes. just all, you, I want to see your honey's dick or whatever. Yes, exactly. Okay, let me finish this. Oh um, my. Keep, no, don't put that away. I want to keep looking at it. Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> my grand, no, no, it's okay. <laughs> my grandparents swing so those are her grandparents swinger parties and a few sex toys from way back in the day when my mom and aunts were growing up (laughs) and then i was mortified (laughs) i immediately took pictures of the photos and sent them to my cousins so they could be just as scarred as i was that's what i would do and had to take a break from cleaning the house for a little while yeah i bet you did (laughs) so i pieced all these things together i realized what i had just stumbled upon these were all old people that i knew all people i had dinner with and played cards with when i was young my nanny and grandpa meatball were both featured in these photos (laughs) as well as a few other close friends of my grandparents (laughs) needless to say i can never really look at my grandparents the same way ever again oh shit the grandparents are still alive yeah she was just cleaning their house oh i thought (laughs) no no they're batches fucking kicking it uh and i took my cousins down with me there's still a lot of that house that needs to get cleaned out but quite frankly i'm horrified to do so yep so yeah that's the story of how i learned my grandparents were swingers stay sexy and don't look under your grandparents bed delaney okay delaney just delaney delaney like melanie but with a d okay Oh, I'm just saying she just blew up her grandpa her grandparents spot so hard like because not that many people call their grandmother batchy <laughs> yeah totally so, so people are gonna know there's gonna be people in that hometown that are like excuse me oh what yeah 
That's really insane. <laughs> that, this is just like, it's just, they're having so much fun. Guys, sex is natural and sex is fun. And not everyone does it. But and everybody. everyone's grandparents Something. do it and take pictures of it. Oh my God. It also looks like they're doing it just to be like, yeah, just take a picture of totally. this. We're being dirty on purpose. Could be. Um, and it, what a gorgeous expression of human love. That was fun. And then just the photo, like the fact that there are photos just made it. I mean, I was, I'm shocked. Do you want to hear this last one? Absolutely. Society mom or covert criminal? Lighthearted. Okay. Hello, MFMists. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. MFMists. Oh. MFMists. Okay. Nice one. I'll take it. That, you know what? That just moved up to number one. <laughs> My daughter turned me on to your show, and now I never miss an episode. The Murderino community in Denver was a great support system for her when she moved across the country. So this dad thanks you all. Aww. You too, Stephen, from the bottom of my heart for creating such a wonderful movement of awesome people. That's great. Thank you. I have a family story that I've never told anyone until now. <gasps> my mom has always appeared from the outside as a very cultured and sophisticated woman. Now, in her 80s, she still runs volunteer organizations and goes to the theater and other fancy events. Mm. But people who know her history know that she grew up dirt poor in Chicago and has always been a scrappy badass. Mm -hmm. When I was in high school, I bought my first real car. It was a Datsun B210. <laughs> yeah. uh, a little beater that cost like $250. After owning it a few months, I took it to a mechanic who said that the whole underside of the car was rusted out and it was amazing that it was still holding together. A couple of days after that diagnosis, I woke up early one morning to find my mom um, trudging into the house out of breath with her clothes all dirty. She told me to get dressed and then she drove me to the local mm. mall where she told me to call the police and tell them my car was stolen. I did and made a police report <gasps> and a couple of days later the cops found the car deep in the woods about a quarter mile away from our rural Virginia house, <gasps> banged up and a wreck apparently the victim of kids taking it out for a joyride. Only after the car was found did my mom tell me the real story. She had taken my car out, found some secluded dirt road and tried repeatedly to crash it into a tree in an attempt to total it. What? But she was too scared to really commit to it. This was way before airbags. So after three or four good bangs, she thought she'd done a good enough job and abandoned the car. Oh. The thought of my society mom careening through the woods, trying mostly unsuccessfully to wreck my car made me laugh out loud. But she was very serious about it and made me swear that I wouldn't tell anyone, oh particularly my. not my dad, since it would technically be fraud or some shit. And we could all get in trouble. <laughs> Even though it happened 40 years ago, I've never told anyone that story story until now <gasps> and now that it's out i'm looking forward to revealing to my kids that their sweet old grandma is really a badass <laughs> car smashing insurance fraud perpetrating criminal oh my. Stay, stay sexy and don't be fooled by sweet old grandma's love david oh my god <laughs> That is unbelievable. That is like a talk. That's like an old school version of a helicopter mom where she's like, you got ripped off. Yeah. I'm going to take care of it. Yeah. Shut your mouth. Don't worry about it. I got this. Oh, my God. So funny. Please send us your emails. My favorite murder at Gmail. We enjoy them so much. Please keep sending us these fucking hilarious, wonderful stories. And also, please stay sexy. And don't get murdered. I go. Goodbye. Uh, bye. Hey, Elvis, you want a cookie? Good boy. Nice one. Oh, come on. I know.